This hinge looks simple, but it took seven failed prototypes to get here. And I'll show you exactly what went wrong and how you can design one that works first time. By the end of this video, you'll know how to design a fully 3D printed snap hinge that clicks together easily, holds strong, and rotates smoothly, all without supports or screws. I'll walk you through every iteration I made, what failed, what worked, and how I used Autodesk Inventor to get the geometry just right. So at this most basic level, we're going to have the body of what we're creating the hinge on, the arms of the hinge and the parts that snap between. Then it needs some male and female parts. I'll be graciously referring to these as the nubs and nub holes. And then a few of the features that streamline the design, but I'll get into that further in the video. Version one looked good, but the arms didn't flex enough and I struggled to snap it together. Version two aimed to fix that. I reduced infill from 15 to 5% and dropped wall loops to one. This gave the arms more give and the hinge snapped together. This was much weaker and I can see it breaking after a few uses. Version three had smaller snap nubs, so it was much easier to assemble and disassemble. Version four went the other direction, larger nubs, tighter tolerance and two wall loops. It looked strong, but was far too stiff to assemble cleanly. The arms started bending outwards during assembly. Although this is the only version that will hold its position wherever you manipulate it, since it's so tight. Version five got closer. I reduced the nub size slightly, kept one wall loop and 15% infill. The fit was good, hold was good, but not as strong as version four, but it was still a pain to click together. Version six solved that with shorter nubs and shallower nub holes. This made it much easier to assemble and of course, easier to detach, which might not be ideal depending on your use case. Version 7 added a tiny chamfer leading to the hinge holes, just a 45 degree slope. And that small change made a massive difference as this allowed the hinge to glide into place and snap together smoothly without overstressing the arms. So what have I learned along the way? I noticed that a tiny gap between the hinge halves looked way cleaner. I mean, just look at these side by side. The improved version makes it harder for anything to get caught in there too, so that's a win-win. Also, a single wall loop is essential for flex, any more and the arms become solid plastic. And with no flex, no snap. While recording this video, I kept forgetting which iteration was which, but I found out that I can actually see through the infill of the parts by simply holding up to a light source. This effect gave me an idea for a cool bedside lamp design. So let's start modeling the snap hinge. We'll start with the male side of the hinge, and this can be imagined as two arms that's going to hold the female part. I'm calling this the male part because it has these nubs here that go inside of the holes of the female part. To begin with, we're going to need something that the arms can actually connect to, so I'm going to create a rectangle to build off. I'll make this 24 by 10, and then I'll extrude this by eight millimeters. Now we have the object that we're going to be connecting the hinges to. We need to create the arms, and I like to make these two millimeters thick and eight millimeters tall. I'll extrude these off of the object by nine millimeters. Now we need to add in the nubs that our female part will snap into. So create a sketch on the inside of our arm, project the edges of the arm, then we can press F7 to slice the model to the sketch plane and using the circle tool I'll create a 4.9 millimeter circle. Extrude the circle by one mil and once this has been done we can add a 0.5 mil chamfer as this will make it easier to snap in place. Feel free to play with the size of the chamfer or not even have a chamfer at all. This will affect the stiffness of the hinge and you can also increase the overall diameter of the circle itself. This will create a tighter tolerance and make it stiffer also. Just ensure that you keep it between five and 4.9 millimeters. Then add a plane at the center plane between the arms. We'll do this using the mid plane between two planes tool and then I'll mirror the extrusion and chamfer features. I'm also going to mirror all of these to the opposite side too. Now it's time to create the female part. And since the gap between the arms is 20 millimeters, the overall size of the female part is going to be 19 and a half millimeters wide and 30 millimeters long. So whatever size that turns out to be on your project, you'll need to ensure that a tolerance of half a mil for a tight fit. Extrude this by eight millimeters to match the height of the arms and start a sketch on the side and create a five mil diameter circle, four mil in and central to the overall height of the part. I'm going to be mirroring this to the other side. Extrude this into the part by one millimeter and then using the same method we did with the previous part We're going to create a plane through the center and mirror the holes to the other side So if the parts were to link up in their current state they would snap together But due to the corners of our female part it wouldn't be able to turn freely 
To fix this, add a 2mm chamfer on the corners surrounding the hinge hole. Then I like to add a 1mm chamfer to help ease the part into place, and this makes the snapping process a lot easier, which means you're less likely to end up breaking your print. Another way we can try and tighten up the hinge is by adding chamfers inside of our holes. These chamfers need to be very small, and I've tried 0.5mm in the past and it's worked well for me. If you followed along with this, or you've made any changes to the design, feel free to leave a comment to let me know what worked and what didn't work for you, and hopefully the other people watching this video can learn from you also. Printing advice. Once you're happy with both halves, export them as STL files and load them into your slicer. The print orientation matters. I print both parts flat on the bed with the hinge axis horizontal. This maximizes the strength in the arms where the snap force is applied and removes the need for support and even though the nubs are not printing on top of anything, I found that it still prints just fine without including supports beneath. Of course, if you find that this doesn't work for you, then you might benefit from including a support here. It seemed extremely important to use one wall loop and 15% infill as this allowed the arms to flex. Set your slicer to print one part fully before starting the next. This cuts down on stringing between the parts and makes for much cleaner prints. So I suppose it's time that I integrate this into a print. You know, one of the things that made the whole process easier for me wasn't just trial and error. It was actually knowing how to use Inventor properly. And that's something I see a lot of people get stuck on. They download the software, maybe watch a couple of random videos, and then spend hours fighting the interface instead of focusing on their design. At which point, the only thing they've successfully assembled is a deep personal regret. So the real question is, do you want to spend your time figuring out how to use Inventor or actually using Inventor to make cool stuff like this? If it's the latter, I've put together a course that walks you through the full Inventor workflow, no fluff, just everything you need to start designing confidently. Knowing Inventor made all the difference. This hinge didn't just click together, the whole process finally did. So for those who have made it to the end of the video, I've made the course completely free for the next month. You just need to use the code CABWITHJORDAN or take a look at the link in the description and it will be completely free if you follow that link. Once printed, you should end up with something that looks like this. It clicks into place, rotates smoothly and doesn't fall apart. So subscribe if you found this helpful. I base my emotional stability on that number, so no pressure, just my well-being and all.